Welcome to a lesson on the graphical approach to average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. The average rate of change of f of x from x sub one to x sub two is the slope of the secant line through the points x sub one comma y sub one and x sub two comma y sub two. So looking at the graph of our blue function here on the left, if we wanted to find the average rate of change from x equals one to x equals two, we would find the slope of this red secant line using these two points on the function, where the slope is equal to the change of y divided by the change of x, or if we want y sub two minus y sub one divided by x sub two minus x sub one, which would give us a slope of three over one, which simplifies to three, giving us the average rate of change of our function from x equals one to x equals two. So again, we say the average rate of change of f of x from x equals one to x equals two is three, which means over this interval, the function value, or y, is increasing by three every time x increases by one. Now if we want to find the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at, let's say, x sub one, this would be the slope of the tangent line at the point x sub one comma y sub one. So again, looking at the graph of our blue function, if we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change at the point one comma one, it would be the slope of this tangent line. So notice how we'd use the point one comma one on the function. And then luckily here we can tell a second point on the tangent line would be this point here, two comma three. So because we can find the second point on the line, we can find the slope of this tangent line, which would give us the instantaneous rate of change of our function at x equals one. So using our slope formula, again we have the change of y divided by the change of x, which gives us a slope of two over one, which simplifies to two, and therefore the instantaneous rate of change of the function at x equals one is two, which means at x equals one, the function value, or y, is increasing by two units every time x increases by one. So we'll spend a lot of time in calculus one determining functions that will give us slopes of tangent lines to a given function. The functions that give us the slopes of tangent lines to a function, or the functions that can be used to determine instantaneous rates of change of a given function are called derivative functions. We won't be finding derivative functions in this video. That topic will come later. But as an example, the function f of x equals x squared has a derivative function, which we say f prime of x, equals two x, and therefore the derivative function f prime of x equals two x can be used to find the slope of the tangent line to the given function f of x for any value of x, which again would also be the instantaneous rate of change. Before we take a look at an example, let's look at an animation. Here our function is graphed in black, and this red line is a secant line, which means the slope of this line, which is approximately 5.5, would be the average rate of change of our function over this interval. Now if we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change of our function, let's say this point here, notice how if we move these points closer together, the secant line would approach the tangent line, which you can see would have a slope of approximately 12.3. Well the actual tangent line has a slope of 12.25, which we see here graphed in blue. So we can use a secant line to predict the slope of a tangent line if we select two points on the function that are very close together. Let's take a look at an example. The graph below shows the temperature change throughout one day. We want to use the graph to answer the following questions. Notice how the x-axis is the number of hours past midnight and the y-axis is the degrees. So the first question is what is the average rate of change of the temperature from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So looking at our graph at 8 a.m., that would be eight hours past midnight. So we want to find the slope of the secant line through this point. And the second point would be at 2 p.m., which would be 14 hours past midnight, which would be this point here. So the secant line would look like this. So to find the average rate of change from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., we want to find the slope of the secant line. And because we don't have the equation to the function, we'll have to approximate the coordinates of these two points. 
So this point looks like it has the coordinates 8, comma 60. And this point looks like it has coordinates 14, comma 75. And therefore the average rate of change of the temperature from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. would be the slope of the secant line. So the slope m would be equal to, again, the change of y divided by the change of x. Notice how the slope of this line is positive, so the rate of change should also be positive. So let's call these the twos and these the ones. So y sub two minus y sub one would be 75 minus 60 divided by x sub two minus x sub one would be 14 minus eight. So here we have 15 divided by six, which simplifies to 2.5. This is measuring the change of y with respect to the change of x, which would be the change in degrees per hour. And because it's positive, we know the temperature is increasing 2.5 degrees per hour over this time interval. So to summarize, we'll say the average rate of change of the temperature from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. is an increase of 2.5 degrees per hour. Next, we want to find the average rate of change of the temperature from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Again, 2 p.m. is 14 hours past midnight, so the first point would be this point here, where we have 14 on the horizontal axis, and then 6 p.m. would be 18 hours past midnight, which would be this point in our function here. So the slope of the secant line through these two points will give us the average rate of change of the temperature from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So our secant line looks like this. Again, we'll have to estimate the coordinates of these two points. Here we'd have 14 comma, let's say 75, and here we'd have 18 comma, some temperature just below 70, let's call it 68 degrees. And now to find the slope of the secant line, again we'll call these the twos and these the ones. So the change of y divided by the change of x would be equal to 68 minus 75 divided by the quantity 18 minus 14. So we have negative seven divided by four, which is equal to negative 1.75. Again, this would be degrees per hour. So because the average rate of change is negative, we know the temperature is decreasing 1.75 degrees per hour over this time interval. So we'll say the average rate of change of the temperature from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m is a decrease of 1.75 degrees per hour. And now for the last example, we want to estimate the instantaneous rate of change of the temperature at 8 a.m. So to find the instantaneous rate of change, we want to find the slope of the tangent line at 8 a.m., which would be at this point here. So first we want to sketch the tangent line at this point, which would look like this, the slope of this tangent line would be the instantaneous rate of change of the temperature at 8 a.m. So to find the slope of this tangent line, of course we'll use this as one of the points where the coordinates would be eight comma 60. And now we need to find a second point on the line to find the slope of this tangent line. Let's say we select this point here. Again, the point must be on the red tangent line, not on the blue function, where it looks like the x-coordinate would be 13, and the y-coordinate would be 80. The slope of this tangent line will give us the instantaneous rate of change. So the slope would be equal to, again, the change of y divided by the change of x of the tangent line. So again, if these are the twos and these are the ones, y sub two minus y sub one would be 80 minus 60 divided by x sub two minus x sub one, that would be 13 minus eight. So we have 20 divided by five, which is equal to four. Again, this would be four degrees per hour 
as the instantaneous rate of change of the temperature at 8 a.m. So the instantaneous rate of change of the temperature at 8 a.m. is increasing at four degrees per hour. I hope you found this helpful.